Hey everybody, welcome to Digging Deep. It's Unji here, and we have a special show today with Kate Nelson, Managing Editor of New Mexico Magazine. We'll see you back here in a minute. You know, I used to be the host of In Focus on Channel 5. No way, oh, were yeah. you really? Oh, so this is like no big yeah. deal to you. Except, you know, hopefully I don't get the hate mail about my hair and my face. Oh my and gosh. What was that stupid thing you were wearing? And People are ridiculous. Yeah, they are. Well, hey everybody, this is Anji, and I'm here with Kate Nelson. She's managing editor of Mexico Magazine. And this is our Wednesday Digging Deep show. This is a show where we get to talk to different people in the community about different topics, different things involving our culture, just to get a bigger sense of where New Mexico is in the world, who we are, and just the so much unique content that we produce into the world. Content is such a new, like, I like, think, like, we, like we were living on a Facebook ad or something. But um, it's kind of that away a little bit. But let me go ahead and let you introduce yourself. Um, and tell our, we're, we have people watching from all over the world. Well, hello so, everyone all over the world. It's exciting. Um, I have been at New Mexico Magazine since 2016 as the managing editor, so I do a lot of writing. I get to recruit terrific <laughs> writers and photographers and, and work with them. And I get to try, I get paid to travel around the state and talk to interesting people about fascinating things and then conjure it all into features that I, that I hope connect with people on emotional levels. Um, before that, I was at the New Mexico History Museum for a number mm. of years, um, doing PR and marketing for them, but also just getting to indulge my passion for finding out about New Mexico history. They've uh -huh. got the palace photo archives there, yeah. the largest photo archives in the state. There's the Palace Press with all the old printing equipment. And oh, it's such a cool... Oh, yeah. <laughs> if, if you haven't been there, um, it's, a, it's a wonderful place to visit. It's open whenever the museum is open out in the Palace Courtyard. In Santa Fe. And um, before that, I spent many, many years as a newspaper journalist mm. at the Albuquerque Tribune and before that at the Kansas City Star doing hard-nosed, hard-news reporting and, and while covering politics for New Mexico, I didn't, I didn't really feel so much a passion for political maneuverings and all of that, but for the human stories that lie within every state budget, within every mm -hmm. debate about whether we're going to allow women to breastfeed in public or not. Right. Um, and, and so getting to approach politics from a human level like that made it interesting to me and helped readers connect to oh, I'm sure. public issues that they need to be involved with. Yes. Oh. So all of that built I into now getting to run around the state and do fun stories. Not a bad way to make a living, is it, Kate? It's not. I mean, it's still hard. <laughs> but how yeah. easy is writing? Not easy. Not easy. Um, and and um, like a lot of journalists, I am what I like to call an extroverted introvert. Yeah. So even like calling someone up to interview them is, is like this uh, act of bravery. Love, you're already answering all my questions. But I'm like, how do you get past the like, don't look at me. Don't. And yeah. yet I'm here like talking in front of every, you know, all week long. And yet making a phone call to someone I have to psych myself up for. It's, it's amazing. And I find, I find now that, that it's my job to be talking to someone in this little town that I'm visiting mm -hmm. makes it a whole lot easier before if I was just out on a road trip, enjoying myself, I wouldn't have the conversation. That is so true. And the experience is far less, less, it's just less. Because mm -hmm. everyone knows New Mexico Magazine, so it's you're like, hey, talk to me. <laughs> and I love that we're both color coordinated. I think this is the preferred color of writers <laughs> around the world. And I should let everyone know that this is this is a bias interview because I love Kate. I love and her. Um, <laughs> you guys know me here at, from T Skies, of course, but I do some freelance writing and, and photographing for New Mexico magazine. I get a lot Kate sends me all sorts of fun stories. Um, this is the do you want to talk about this issue? This is the one that's out right now. Let's go to camera three again. This is our November issue. And it's, the main feature in it is dedicated to the making traditions here mm -hmm. in New Mexico, which are hallowed. Um, if you go all the way back to the, the first basketry um, that, that ancestral Puebloans and Mimbres people were making, up through 
the blacksmithing and silvering traditions, silver making traditions as the Spanish moved in and those were adopted, the pottery traditions, saddle making. Um, and, and so we sent a handful of writers out around the state to find some of the, these very skilled craftspeople who achieved the top of their ranks. And then also found some up and comers, like on this page, Clarissa Petty. This is a page about woodworkers and woodworking, Spanish colonial. There's all kinds of traditions and bultos and whatnot. She's a luthier. She works at UNM and makes violins and cellos. What? And, yes. And trains other people to make them as well. There's that a, is so interesting. There's actually a really huge luthier tradition here in New Mexico. We're kind of... We've kind of like a, got our own Americana thing happening in New Mexico, but it has this this Spanish and native twist yeah. going on with it. it, um, it I mean, it, it shouldn't be a surprise. We have every other kind of artist here. Exactly. <laughs> Glassmakers. Yeah. Well, and you've written about them. Yeah. That, that terrific show at... Um, at the Museum of Indian Arts and Culture that I just saw last week. Did you? I haven't got a chance yet. It's really beautiful. So let me jump into some of my questions here for you. Uh, you've already kind of touched on a few of them. but blabbering out. I told you I would blab. Okay. No, 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 it's good. <laughs> We're just having a conversation. Um, some, Dana says she loves her subscription in New Mexico Magazine. Thank you. Yeah, Philander was just in this one. He was going to come on our <gasps> That's show. That's right. Yes. Oh, Philander, thank you so much for participating in that. Your work is beautiful. Yeah, if you're watching Philander, we still want you to come on this show. Um, so I was wondering if you could just sort of talk about, um, for everyone that's... Well, people from New Mexico that are watching, but also for other places, what the real mission is of New Mexico yeah, Magazine. Yeah, it's, you know, it's changed over the years. This is the oldest state-owned magazine in the nation. Oh, We're on the, uh, in, in July 2023, we will be 100 years old. Oh, wow, I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah, and it started out as a magazine um, for the highway department and was largely as a tool to let contractors know what kind of roads were going to be built. So they could bid on them. Um, lots hard. of ads for road grading and, and gravel and stuff like that. But the state pretty quickly realized that, oh, now if we have a road to Hondo that's safe, mm -hmm. people might want to go there and do things. Um, so they started adding some travel articles. Then there came a period where we were under... The, so we were under the highway department. Then we moved over to the game and fish department. Okay. Lots of dead mountain lions and elk and, and articles about fishing and hunting. And then eventually it moved over to the tourism department, where it has been for, for decades now. So we're an arm of the tourism department, but we have a little bit of independence from them as well, because we're, we're journalists. Mm -hmm. um, the, the main mission of the magazine is to encourage people, whether they live here or want to visit here, to get out and experience the state and have a good time. The, the deeper mission that I feel is to help explain New Mexico mm. so that people appreciate that there, there are centuries of stories here um, of people, different cultures coming together, often clashing, um, often cooperating, and the things that have grown out of that that you see today if you go to a, a Pueblo or if you go to the Navajo Nation or the Apache land things you're seeing have been happening there 100 200 300 400 500 years mm -hmm. and that's a tradition that growing up in Kansas you know we were we were a relatively young state until recent times the the native people in Kansas were were pretty much ignored mm -hmm. um, and, and God bless their, their, their congresswoman now who's bringing it all out forward. <laughs> in addition, I'm a, I'm a first generation American. I'm, I'm the first American in my family tree. And one of the things that, I, that made me fall in love with New Mexico enough to move here is the rootedness that people have. Yes. Something I never experienced in my life mm -hmm. before. And so that bowl of pozole that some abuela might hand you on a Christmas Eve day is is just laced with meaning. Yes. With emotion, with pride, maybe with sorrow. Um, and I want the person who reads this magazine and decides to 
had an experience to go there with that sense that this is something bigger than watching some native people dance, eating the fry bread, posting something to Facebook. Right. That there is, that this is a prayer, that that this has very deep meaning within the culture, that I need to be quiet and pay attention, that when it's appropriate, I can talk with someone. Even if it's that person running the little country store in mm -hmm. the middle of nowhere, having that conversation with the person that I'm always scared to do on my own, um, <laughs> The experience becomes something more moving and helps you gain some of that rootedness yes. in New Mexico as well. I've never experienced that anywhere else in the United States. The only place that I feel comes close to uh, New Mexico in the country is New Orleans and maybe like Savannah, Georgia somewhere. But New Orleans feels like home to me and that might just be my own thing, but there's such a, a richness there as well too. Yeah. Everything has meaning there as well. It's well, and you, and all the cultures that, we always talk about, you know, in the tricultural state, but, but New Mexico, there, I mean, there were French people here and Germans here, there were Russians coming mm -hmm. in. The, the, you know, at one point in like the 16, 1700s, all the wars in Europe had like a little shadow play happening here in New Mexico. So even this whole world view that New Mexico provides is something to, to tap into and be yes. appreciative of. Well, and then going back to what you're saying too about kind of like the magazine gives you an end to these conversations. And I was thinking about how, um, and I was curious if you had a background in journalism and you do. Um, it's so different writing for a magazine than a newspaper. Oh, so different. Because there's this whole mythology around a magazine and it's like this chronicle of culture. And I know people have New Mexico magazine collections going yeah. way back. Because they don't just throw it out or use it to pick up the dog mess. It's like people treasure magazines. And, yeah. and um, oh, I just don't know if you have anything to add to that. But I, I've always been captivated by magazines. They're just so beautiful. and. They're like these little miniature, like picture. They're picture books for grown-ups. <laughs> yeah, and and the and the 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 text is the the word version of picture books mm -hmm. of of conjuring images in your mind. That that whole theater of the mind thing that you have the space to do in a long magazine article. We have plenty of short articles where you have to be like on your game to yeah. get it said in two hundred words. <laughs> Those um, are the hard ones. It's totally hard. <laughs> this this. Um, one of our most popular features is this backstory, and I think it tops out at like 170 words, and you got to tell a complete story about some little oddball place in New Mexico. That's like a creative writing, um, like a like a assignment, like Bingo. tell a story in 175 <laughs> words. <laughs> but then when you get the chance to tell that that longer story, um, I'm working on one right now about Raton, and. I came upon it, um, the Raton Museum had posted an ad for a field trip they were doing out to some old coal mining towns on the Vermejo Ranch, which is generally closed to the public and incredibly expensive. And I love field trips. I'm always yes. signing up for archaeological <laughs> field trips and geology field trips. And I called them up and they said, oh, no, 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 it's sold out. But they know who I am. You're like, <clears throat> and they said, <laughs> but would this be for a story? Uh -huh. And I'm like, dang, we haven't written about Raton in a really long time. So went up and spent a few days up there, got to explore these old mining towns on the Vermejo as well as at Sugarite. There's a really cool one on the NRA Whittington Center. But then it's all centered around how this, this town that was made by coal and then almost killed by the loss of coal uh -huh. is finding its feet under it now. Um, there's there's new businesses coming in breweries distilleries cool. um, some renovation of some of the downtown properties and getting to immerse myself in those kinds of experiences being able to tell some of the history yeah. and and the the visual um, I think a lot of us who've been here for a while we tend to kind of shrug off northeastern New Mexico it's one of the most quietly gorgeous yeah. Places I've ever been. If you've never been to Johnson Mesa, take a road trip, <laughs> drive across Johnson Mesa. You can fit, you can fit a visit to Capuline Volcano into it and, and to Raton. I was going to ask, um, what exactly does being a managing editor entail? Like, what is your job? 
besides going on field trips and cooking <laughs> adventures and talking to cool people. It's not nearly enough of that, unfortunately. <laughs> um, it's a lot of wrangling. Um, the I was going to ask, is it like herding cats? Is kind it professionally of. Yeah, herding yeah, yeah. cats? <laughs> I'm like, I'm second in command on the editorial side. Steve Guadura is mm -hmm. our editor-in-chief and is more responsible for like the overall vision of the magazine and if we're going to reform parts of it, which he's done a lot of since coming on about a year and a half ago. Um, and because he's such a big thinker, he kind of needs someone to crack a whip behind him. And Nar say, narrow it down. Time to have a meeting. Time to make a decision. <laughs> so I do a lot of I do a lot of that as well. We recently hired Molly Boyle as our senior editor, and we've worked with her as a freelancer for a while as well. And, and it's just so splendid now to be to be fully staffed. There have been a few times when I've been the only editorial oh staff. Oh my gosh, there. I can't believe I published a magazine myself for a little while, so I understand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just... <laughs> <clears throat> Um, so I think, well, we have a question he coming up here, but I think what we're all dying to know are, what are your antidotes? What are some of your favorite people and places that you've been that, like, Ooh. I know it's, there's probably so many, but does anything come to mind that is just... I can think of, like, one of the things I like to think of are the hidden gems, mm -hmm. and how sometimes those have opened up a really human story. When I did a piece on the town of Lincoln a few years back. <clears throat> For a number of years, I'd heard about the Hondo Iris Farm, which is near there, and I'm a gardener. I want irises, too. Yeah. Um, and w I get there, and the, the woman who runs it, now, of course, I'm going to blank on her name, is a native artist and jeweler. And she's working with a garden manager who's a horticulturist, and he's been working a lot in Mexico and bringing up plants that can naturalize to a climate change uh -huh. um, geography. Oh, I love it so much that's happening right now. It was just beautiful. And and there's like little kids running around in the fairy garden and old oh, guys wow. out drinking Diet Pepsi and this whole little quiet universe that's just that's just off the road south of south of Lincoln between there in Rui Doso. Um, oh, it's, that's in the mountains, isn't it? Kind of. It is, and it's it's really Beautiful near um, San Patricio, where mm -hmm. Peter Hurd did lived and did a lot of his work. I stopped one night in at the San Patricio Church, or at least one of the churches that's there in the graveyard that's out front, and I'm just kind of taking some moody pictures. And there's a peacock in the graveyard. Oh my gosh. I love those moments. Because you're in New Mexico, so yeah. there's a peacock in the <laughs> Why not? graveyard. Um, another, another one of my favorite um, experiences, there's a, um, an abandoned church in a town called Taiban. It's very near Fort Sumner. Yes. I've it's one of the there. most photographed things you've ever seen. You've seen it on Facebook, Instagram. Everyone who drives past there stops and takes a picture of it. So I wanted to do a backstory on it, and, and was having trouble finding info about its past and finally came upon um, these two fellows, brothers, one who still lived in Fort Sumner, runs the grocery store there, and one who's in Texas now. And for this 175 word article, <laughs> I spent probably a cumulative three hours on the phone with both of them, because A, they're charming men. It's fascinating. Who've lived there forever and, and have fascinating stories, and that was their family's church. Oh, wow. And it wasn't until the end of the second interview that the fellow who now lives in Texas says, oh, I have the piano. <gasps> and it turns out that a lot of the ghost hunters and whatnot who, who go out and photograph these types of places, they'd all been wondering, Where what happened to the piano? piano? Oh, I found it. Good find, <laughs> Kate. <coughs> that is so cool. It was really fun. I know for me, um, and this is part of like, so this is like a layered question, I guess. Um, I fall in love with every topic. Like, I can't write about something if I'm not in some way in love yeah. with the subject or the person. And um, that can become really exhausting after a while also. It can be. So I had two questions. When I think of, like, one of the people that I just fell in love with, it would be John Quick to see Smith. She was just, like, the most incredible elder yes so beautiful so much wisdom her raising her granddaughters who are just a delight she's in the process of setting up a scholarship for women painters at iai in margaret bagshaw's she? name and margaret bagshaw was one of my my dear friends I keep trying to get her on this show but she's very humble she's in a she's a force 
Oh yeah, she yeah. definitely is. But who is that for you? One or two people that you think of and you're just like, that changed me. I wasn't the same after that interview. Not necessarily the interview. Here's, the, here's one of the most pungent experiences I've had. It starts with um, doing a story a number of years ago on Bosque Redondo and the Long Walk. Mm. And they were just in the process at that point of starting to change up their exhibits, which they have recently done, so that they're told from the voices of the Navajo and Mescalero, people who were imprisoned there. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest scars on the American story is that experience at the Bosque Redondo Memorial. Um, the manager let me stay on the property in the manager's house, so I was there alone. Oh, gosh. Um, <clears throat> it was actually very, it was very spiritual. Um, I got to meet Chanto Begay, the artist who did the the concave mural that's inside there, and he's an incredibly inspiring person. That. But having to having to immerse myself in the this the various parts of the tragedy, horrible things happened to he, human beings who were there, um, and yet they survived. Um, but that that scarred me for a while. It took a while to shake that off. So just mm. a couple of weeks ago. I'm, this was this was back in 2016, 2017, I think. Um, th a couple of weeks ago, I was down in Old Town uh -huh. and, and was walking past the artisans who sell there. And I see some art that looks Navajo. And the gentleman is sitting there, and I, I, we start talking. And he starts revealing this whole story of his family's ties to the Long Walk without me bidding any of them. Uh -huh. He's just bringing it up. But because I know about it, and because I'm sensitive to it, I'm, I'm not shrugging him off. I'm not walking away. I end up sitting down and, and listening and absorbing. He's crying at one point, and it's this, you could call it a minor moment, but to me that was a magical experience of connecting into someone's heart mm. on a street in Old Town. Yeah. Um, because I had some of that deeper knowledge that I hope all readers walk away from the yes. magazine with. That is something that I treasure about being a writer, is you learn a little bit about so many different things. And you can have so many interesting conversations it's with fantastic. so many different people. Yeah. I just, this little guy came into my um, studio just yesterday, uh, an elder, and he's learning how to play bolero music. And I'm like, you come back tomorrow with your guitar, and he's really shy, and... And um, he actually has a stutter, but when he, and it's like hampered him his whole life, but when he sings, yeah. it goes away. And and so, but he doesn't know how to use the internet and he can't find like a, a book of Spanish Bolero songs. So I'm like, I'm going to help you, Mr. Say, did he walk into the right he building? He did. I was like, and he's like, you know, nobody cares about this music. I don't know why I'm doing I'm like, no, you're not hanging out with the right people, or Mr. Yeah. Ogin. Come back. So today he came back with his guitar and he played for me and the baby. And it was, and he just tells me about himself, oh and he learned God. how to play guitar from his grandparents. Let's introduce him to Lone Pinion. I have so many people that I, I'm like, I'm gonna start a band for you for my enjoyment. Yes, yes. <laughs> so it's just, I love the, those moments, and I think um, as a writer and somebody that does journalism, you're always looking for them too. Your and mind starts. So many of us. I mean, we we have the mask that we. Before COVID, we had masks, and we still put them on where we're just kind of operating within the world and not cracking open mm. for everyone. Because that's, that's a very vulnerable yeah. thing to do, and like, I don't trust you or whatever. And when you make that connection, yeah, so many beautiful things can happen. Absolutely. Okay, so Dana has a question for you. It says, how do you go about the selection process for topics or subjects to be covered in each issue? We have lots of brainstorming sessions. Um, we also are accepting pitches from writers and photographers, as well as people who aren't writers and photographers, but just have a neat idea that they think we ought to do. Yeah. And we put a lot of thought into, it, with each issue, are, are we making um, a good geographic representation of the state, which is hard to do, because it's a big state. So at least efforts at it. Are we showing a, a demographic reach so that I mean this isn't this is an incredible cover that we're oh my gosh I, both yes. an African American and a, a native woman um, so we want that that ethnic diversity do we have an age diversity um, 
And is it a compelling story? There, because it's not a newspaper, there are topics that people will suggest to us that are great story ideas, but they're not right for this magazine. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's because it's um, an active political issue, um, and we are a state-owned magazine, and, and our mission is to encourage travel. So there's not, there's not, there's only so far we can go down that pathway. Um, in another instance, it might be, oh, a new hair salon opened up in my town, and I'm kind of like, well, what's different about yes. that than every other hair <laughs> salon? And will it be there the three months later when we finally get this off the press and right. into mailboxes? So. A lot of that kind of decision making goes on. Mm -hmm. More than anything, it's is there a human story? And is there something in that that's going to inspire the reader to get out of their house mm -hmm. and have an experience? Adventures. Yes, have adventures. Tachi and I love adventures. <laughs> I so want to meet your daughter. <laughs> oh, we can't. We'll talk about that later. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. Um, oh, what part of the magazine do you read first? When it comes out, not one of our fifty is missing. Um, I can't tell you how many people tell me I love the magazine. Oh, I read one of our fifty it. is missing. It's it's to me it's like the joke is over. But um, Let's go to camera. I have to write it every month, so I do. The people. Oh, who, this is where you don't go first. That's where I don't go first. Oh, I'm, yeah. I misheard you. Nah. Never mind. <laughs> other other people seem to love it a lot. Um, by the time it comes out, I'm so. I've so memorized every section that what I what I give myself the gift of is reading it cover to back. Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay. I was just curious if there was like, I don't know. Um, and then, oh, I, this is a good one. What? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> if you say so yourself. <laughs> I'm curious how social media like this mm -hmm. has changed the face of publishing in your experience. Um, very much so. We have for, for better or for worse. Both. Yeah. Um, it's a new way of reaching readers. So we have a very active Facebook page, Instagram, and Twitter. I think there's a Pinterest page over there somewhere, but we're this mm -hmm. with our staff. Those are the three we can spend time on. Facebook, we get a lot of reader engagement, mm. um, a lot of um, talking back and forth, and we also use that to drive readers to the web version of the mm -hmm. magazine in hopes that one of these days they'll buy a subscription. Mm -hmm. um, it's also given us a chance to do things that have nothing to do with what's in these pages, but that we find interesting if it's somebody else's post that we want to mm -hmm. share or one of us is out on the road having an experience in, in Raton and we take a little video and, and post that. And um, I think I try to feed the curiosity mm -hmm. and it gives, give them a good time anytime they come to, to one of our pages. It doesn't happen very often, but sometimes we get great story ideas. Mm. Um, sometimes we get told that we've done something we shouldn't have done mm -hmm. and that gives us an opportunity to step back and say, ah, you know what, you're right. Mm -hmm. We're going to change the online version. We're going to have a correction in the next issue. Yes. <laughs> um, and that's that's part of too, the trustworthiness that we need to have with our readers. Yes, because um, magazine's not here to hurt anybody. Absolutely not, but we do make mistakes because gosh darn it, we're people. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had a question that that was gonna fuel into. Okay, so what are some of the biggest challenges of putting together a, a, an issue? <clears throat> the Despite the fact that we are a part of the state tourism department, we have to make our own money mm -hmm. through sales of the magazine, whether it's newsstands or subscriptions, and largely through ad sales. Mm -hmm. And that's a really tough business to that be in. That was the hardest for when I was trying to be a magazine <laughs> publisher, editor, ad sales, or, or it's you can't real do all hard. of it. You yeah. can't do all of it. Um, it got especially hard in March of 2020 when everything shut down. Oh, yes, I bet. So not as many ads were being sold, and we're trying to produce a travel magazine at a time when you no, can't travel. Um, we used that as, as an opportunity, though, to kind of play with 
people's aspirations. Mm. You know, when it is safe to travel again, would you like to do something like yeah. this? Um, one of the ways we got through that was by um, really changing up the kinds of advertising we offer. Um, we now on the editorial side are participating in some um, advertorial development, so they get magazine caliber writers producing oh, okay. that kind of content right. better than what you're going to get anywhere else. Yeah. <laughs> um, the financial side of it is is probably the biggest hurdle. Um, and the next one, I think, is is maintaining the caliber. Mm. Um, all of us need editing. Uh, every story I turn in gets changed through the through the process. But we also always want to be bringing on new writers, um, especially writers of different communities, whether it's ethnicity or by uh, BIPOC or by um, any all the all the all, of them. all the adjectives you can put onto it. Um, we want as many voices as possible because we want people telling their own stories. Mm -hmm. And we want people who are in communities that, that I'm not in finding stories yeah. within those communities that I don't That's see. That's one thing that I really appreciate about this magazine and I'm so proud to be a part of is that you are allowing communities to tell their own stories yeah. and that's so needed it's and so it's needed. so about time and that also kind of goes into Amy's question or Ame how do you balance the sensitive subject between indigenous and Spanish colonial stories it's it's a tough thing I think for all historians to to figure out how to how to handle that um, I think there has to almost always be a recognition that damages were made, concessions were made, that, um, and it could have been both sides depending on what what particular skirmish or war you're talking about. Um, what I always come back to is, but those communities are still here. Um, may have been at each other's necks and doing horrific things 200, 300 years ago. Um, but they have maintained parts of their tradition, have melded one another's traditions into themselves, and that's something to be respected. I was saying earlier that I've never seen roots like that anywhere else. In history is not for the faint of heart. Mm -mm. <laughs> um, there's there's a certain amount of um, brutal honesty mm -hmm. that you have to have, but dwelling on it isn't the job of this magazine. Mm -hmm. So it might get mentioned, mm -hmm. it might be alluded to or alluded to, um, but, and it, I, and it has to be, it has to be. We're just, we're just in different times now of being yeah. more transparent and well, more Well, and I think part of that also is that you are allowing people to tell their own stories right. too. So it's not like an outsider is coming in and trying to like paint this history. You're, there are uh, Chicano art, there are Chicano writers, there's Native American writers, there's me, who's both. So, and I, to that note, we are always looking and always welcoming new writers. When I was talking about the maintaining the caliber of it, in bringing new voices in, um, they didn't have 20 years at a daily newspaper, um, working with terrific editors and training up. And so some of that means doing some nurturing mm -hmm. and, and helping and, and guiding people up to a level where they can be participants in us. And that's an important part of our job. If you're listening or if you know someone out there, um, we're always looking for, for new voices. For I don't think we have any Asians writing for us. Um, we don't, certainly don't have enough black writers and black photographers and always um, Native people and, and Chicano people are welcome at our doorway. So how do people get in touch with you? They would send an email to editor at nmmagazine.com. That's easy. Yeah. Putting it right there in the comments. And then, do you have an electronic subscription, asks Kathy. We do. There's, um, there's um, um, a digital version of the magazine. Um, that I believe still comes free to everyone who subscribes mm. to the print magazine. And you're catching me out here. I'm not sure if it's possible to subscribe just to the digital version. But if you go to newmexicomagazine.org, that's our br brand new website. It has lots of new bells and whistles. 
newmexicomagazine.org. There's a subscribe button up in the top right corner, and I think it'll take you to a page that explains the Honestly, options. Honestly, there's nothing like holding a magazine. And that was what I was going to ask you, and then I spaced out, uh, <laughs> is I know a few years ago, Everyone thought it was the, like the death of print and yeah. all of us who love holding books and love smelling magazines Newspapers and having and them news. scattered yeah, everywhere yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> were devastated. But I feel like that kind of that like that hype sort of died down and people are back enjoying tangible things again. I think they are. And you could compare it to, wow, people are buying vinyl record albums again. Right. Um, some of this stuff that we thought technology would, would chase away, there's a tangible and a quality experience. Exactly. And I encourage everyone, this, the online is great, but this has a lot of photos, yeah. my photos, that <laughs> aren't online. And it's just, there's just something, going back to the whole mythology of the magazine, seeing your name in print or seeing your portrait in print or seeing your friend or your community represented in print i don't know it never gets old to me right and it, online it seems ephemeral but when it's okay, on a so piece of paper it's just like magic let me offer you all a special deal okay if you hit that subscribe button you'll see a promo code when you start signing up for the subscription in the promo code write one word can be all cap can be lowercase doesn't matter radio sub R-A-D-I-O-S-U-B. It's a, it's a special deal we offer usually when I'm appearing on a radio show, but this counts. <laughs> and it will knock the subs it'll, it'll knock 10 bucks off the subscription price from $25 to $15. For a year's That's worth nothing. of fabulousness arriving in your mailbox. And it is fabulous too. This magazine is beautiful. You guys do an amazing job. Of my, my daughter, my one-year-old, <laughs> also loves magazines, but she loves to do this to them. Mm -hmm. And of all the pages she tore out, it was the one that I was responsible for. <laughs> so I'll have to get another copy. But, I mean, it's a beautiful magazine. And, and thank you. is there anything else that you wanted to mention while you have the platform? I think the only thing I would want to close with is that I have a sincere love for New Mexico. I wish I had been born here. I wish I had six generations going back, but I'm doing the next best thing by exploring every mm -hmm. corner of the state I can and exploring its history, what happened here before, and what, what it means to the people who live here today. Mm, that's beautiful. And sometimes it takes a fresh pair of eyes to appreciate what if you grow up with, maybe you just take for granted. Absolutely. And the state has so much. I'm, I've been here 32 years, and I'm still being astonished by things I discover. Where I grew up, there's dirt roads I've never been down. Right. And I'm like, hmm, when do I have time to go down that dirt road? <laughs> I want to see where it goes, you know? So I think you just, if you have an adventuresome heart, New Mexico is the place for you, for sure. And the best roads on earth are dirt. <laughs> well, <laughs> depends on the time of year. <laughs> I grew up at the end of the dirt road that mm. <laughs> caliche time. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you so much for making time for us today. We appreciate you so very much. I'm honored to be here and thank you all of you for tuning yes. into this. Thanks for watching everybody. Um, if you have uh, any ideas of somebody you know in the community that would make a good story, either for New Mexico Magazine or for this Digging Deep show, let us know. Reach out to us. <laughs> You can always email us here at hello at tskies.com as well. So I hope everybody has a beautiful evening. Go out and give someone some compliments, spread some love, listen to someone's story, be quiet and just listen. This world would be a better place if we gave more compliments. Yes, it should really turn <laughs> someone's day around. <laughs> All right, everybody, you have a beautiful night.